Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first 2019 Offutt Air Force Base Virtual Air Show. There was an air show scheduled for this year, however, it was canceled due to environmental conditions such as flooding. Aircraft that were stationed at Offutt Air Force Base had to be sent to other places until the flooding has diminished. We will be showcasing airplanes from the Navy, Air Force, and Marines today. We will not be showcasing any helicopters in this particular virtual air show. Whenever there's a conflict in the world, one of the first questions that are asked by our nation's leadership is where is the nearest aircraft carrier? Coming in from the left are the Navy fighters that are currently in use. They can, they can be, be launched, launched from, from aircraft, aircraft carriers and fly up to 1,500 or 2,000 miles away, depending on the configuration and if they have drop tanks and what the conditions are that they will be going into. Flying in loose formation in the lead is the brand new F-35 Lightning II. The F-35 recently completed carrier qualifications and is now a frontline fighter. On the left slot is the F-18 Super Hornet and the right the Marines are featured with the F-18 Hornet. In the rear is the AV-8B Harrier II, currently deployed with the Marines that often deploy from the Marine aircraft carriers that carry mostly Marines. Of course, even though the Marines and Navy work together very often, here they split just as they normally split after the work is done. The Navy is peeling off to the right and the Marines peeling off to the left. The Navy deploys all over the world and can get its carriers to the world in under 24 hours depending on where the strike is at and where the nearest aircraft carrier is located. However, the United States Air Force also has aircraft deployed throughout the world and can provide cover and support as well as wage its own warfare when needed by itself. Coming in from the left are the Air Force's top line fighters. These are the aircraft that will be engaging and dogfighting against enemy airplanes.
in the lead is the brand new F-22 Raptor. The Raptor carries its weapons internally and can launch them at a second's notice. In the left spot is the F-15 Eagle and on the right is the F-16 Viper. This particular F-15 can perform both dogfighting and strike capabilities. The F-16 is an older aircraft, but it is still a very potent adversary and is still in active duty use and for deployed around the world. It is comparable to the Navy's F-18 Hornet. If called to a fresh and unknown combat zone, the Navy fighters and the Air Force fighters will not be able to control the skies as easily if there are not early warning airplanes available to provide aerial control. In addition, Whatever ground troops may be in the area with either American or Allied support will require aerial support to help them prevent from being overrun by the enemy. Coming in from the left are our early warning and ground support aircraft. In the lead is the tried and true E3 Sentry. The Sentry can provide command and control for thousands of square miles. This allows Navy and Air Force fighters to engage other airplanes long past their own aircraft's radar capabilities. On the left is the AC-130 Spectre gunship, known for providing immediate support to combat and special forces ground crews. On the right is the Navy's E-2 Hawkeye, 
that has comparable capabilities to the Air Force AWACS. In trail is the aging but potent A-10 Thunderbolt II. The A-10 Thunderbolt fires at such a rapid rate and with such power that the aircraft actually slows down during flight. As well as controlling enemy airspace and denying the enemy control of their airspace, American and Allied crews need to be able to blind the enemy electronically. This task is done by both Navy and Air Force, as well as Marine pilots, in conjunction with detecting and destroying enemy radar installations. Coming in, in from, from the, the left, 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 the, the new EA-18 18 Growl, which, which is, is the electronic, electronic warfare, warfare variant of the F-18 Super Hornet. Leading, Leading is the EA-6B Prowler. Prowler. The Prowler, Prowler has, has been used by the Navy, Air Force, and Marines, and only a select few aircraft hold that distinction. The Prowler's electronic capability has been said to be able to black out the entire east coast of the United States. The EA-18 Growler has at, at least, least as much capability as, capability as the Prowler and more. And
aircraft engaged in wartime operations are controlled by Joint Forces Commands and the Pentagon right here at Alpha Air Force Base other military bases around the United States and other locations around the world. The leadership decisions are not just made on the ground. They are also made in the air. Needed for these operations include airborne command and control aircraft and spy aircraft which can provide higher-ups with real-time information about what is going on on the ground. And what capabilities the enemy has. Coming in, in from the left, left. We, we have, have our command and, and control and spy airplanes. These, These do not include unmanned spy, spy planes, planes or drones. In, in the, the lead, lead is the E-4 NAOC command and control aircraft. aircraft. On the left is the RC-135. To the right of that is the E-6 Tacoma. All three of those airplanes routinely fly right here out of off Air Force Base. In the rear, is the tried and true U-2 spy plane known as the Dragon Lake. Some of those aircraft have drones that can be reeled out to talk with underwater submarines. Those wires have miles of length to them. The U-2 spy plane routinely flies at an airspeed and altitude known as Coffin's Corner. This is the nickname for the speed of the indicated airspeed, which is a very slim margin between the aircraft's stall speed and the never exceed speed due to the thin air at such high altitudes.
as one of the questions that is first posed by the upper chain of command for the military-industrial complex is where is the first aircraft carrier or the nearest aircraft carrier when a skirmish, battle, or war breaks out. Along with it, the other question that is asked is where are the nearest bombers? Coming in from the left are the United States Air Force's premier frontline bombers. Coming in from the left, in the lead, is the B-52 Stratofortress, which has been the mainstay of the U.S. Air Force for bomber capability since the 1950s. On the left is the high subsonic B-1 Lancer. And on the right is the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. The B-52 is constantly being upgraded and refined. It is expected to end up being an airframe that is over 100 years old before it is retired. The B-1 has swept wings allowing it to go at treetop level deep into enemy territory. The B-2 can swing between existing radar towers that have not yet been destroyed by the electronic warfare aircraft. The Military Airlift Command is a vital part of America's military capabilities. Oftentimes, 
civilian airliners. Our contract is to fly our troops, maintenance personnel, and command and control personnel to places around the world. Aircraft also need to be able to fly troops into combat zones as well as provide an aerial launch point for special operations and airborne troops. Coming in from, from the, the left, left is the military's transport apparatus. In the lead is the huge C-5 galaxy. On the left is the C-17 Globemaster III. On the right is the C-130 Hercules. And the left rear is the new V-22 Osprey, Osprey. Vertical, vertical land and takeoff take aircraft. aircraft. And, and then the, the right rear right is the rarely, rarely seen C-2 Greyhound, Greyhound, which is the Navy's carrier-borne transport aircraft. aircraft. Our military aircraft conduct operations in the air and over land from both the ground and the sea. But warfare operations also are conducted by aircraft on the sea. It is said that the best tool for hunting an enemy submarine is another submarine. But sometimes submarines 
and fast pack air ships are located at a long distance off and they need to be dealt with quickly. Coming in from the left is the United States Navy's anti-submarine warfare aircraft, along with submarines, they also interdict in drug operations and limited ground attack. The old but effective P-3 Orion is one of the aircraft still flying with patrol squadron forces around the world. In the lead, is the P-8 Poseidon, newer aircraft that is based on the Boeing 737 airframe. Both aircraft have the ability to get on station quickly and to loiter, flying so slowly around certain areas for several hours. The anti-submarine airplanes are also aided by anti-submarine helicopters and work in conjunction with fast attack submarines and ballistic missile submarines. This concludes the aerial portion of the 2019 Offutt Air Force Base Virtual Air Show. Please feel free to leave comments below View my other videos and join my Patreon page.